I love the feeling of racing and, and just being in the water. For me, it's, it's not even about the winning, it's about the racing. Powerful, fearless. Isaac Hennig fell in love with swimming at the age of four. It's about the community, it's about the friendships that you build. Being a swimmer defines him. The Yale swim team, a place of belonging for the college junior. But outside the pool, Isaac, who was assigned female at birth, was struggling. It's a constant performance, it's exhausting. There were moments where you thought about hurting yourself. Yeah, those were some of my lowest moments. And some of it was the struggles of living a life where all of the decisions you're making feel like they're going against yourself. What was it like to come out to your team? I was scared, I'm gonna be honest. I, you know, I was nervous. I wasn't sure how they were gonna take it. Isaac says it was a relief to find his teammates more than welcoming. Isaac's a happy person, always has been. A little smile, a little charm. And I didn't like to see, you know, this dynamic person not happy. Isaac began socially transitioning last year, undergoing top surgery, but he decided to continue to compete for the women's team. The big thing that I chose not to do was, was start hormones. I felt really attached to the women's team here at Yale and I wanted to, you know, complete what I signed up for. But for other athletes, especially trans women, the choice between self and sport is tricky, often requiring hormones to qualify to compete on women's teams. All this fueling a national debate on how to be inclusive to trans athletes while balancing what some argue is fairness. I think what, what struck me about it most is, is just the, the visceral anger that seems to come through um, in a way that for me doesn't really feel justified. You know, I'm really just some guy out here swimming, living my life, and I don't think that anyone deserves that, that level of anger. Isaac finding himself front and center, making waves during a head-to-head -head competition with one of the most controversial college swimmers, Leah Thomas, a transgender woman assigned male at birth. Leah's record-shattering performances, a lightning rod in the debate over trans women competing in elite athletics. From the beginning, I've said that biological boys should not play in women's sports. We all should feel comfortable with who we are in our own skin. Um, but I think sport should all be played at an even playing field. Leah swam for UPenn's men's team for three seasons. She's now qualified to compete on the women's team after undergoing more than two years of hormone therapy. She declined to speak with us, but recently shared her experience on the Swim Swam podcast. I've experienced a lot of muscle loss and strength loss. I have to like readjust my goals and what I think of as a good time or a good pace to hold in practice. In two events this season, Leah posted the fastest times in women's college history, but instead of celebration, it was met with outrage. What do you make of that argument? That Leah Thomas, as a trans woman, should not be competing against other women. I think that a lot of the very strong takes come from people, you know, misunderstanding what it means for Leah to be complying with the rules to you know, have undertaken all of these steps to ensure that things are fair. Isaac beat Leah in the water by almost two seconds back in January. Hennig had the fastest time out of everybody. But then lost to her by a hair during last night's Ivy League championship. Leah Thomas making up a lot of ground. Still, some argue that the physical advantages of going through male puberty gives trans female athletes an unfair advantage, even after years of hormone therapy. Leah Thomas has been through puberty. So that's 10 years of having testosterone, making broader shoulders and bigger lungs. Nancy Hogshead Maycar is a women's rights attorney and former three-time Olympic gold medal swimmer. She founded Champion Women, which advocates for girls' and women's equality in sports. Men and women are built very differently. So we created women's sports specifically so that biological women could have a place to win to get accolades, to make a living, all of the things that come with elite sports. Nancy recently filed a petition on behalf of 16 UPenn swimmers, Leah Thomas's teammates, speaking out against her inclusion in women's competitions. They argue that Leah is taking away some of their chances to compete. They want her to lead a happy, productive life, but they don't think it's fair that she's competing in the women's category. That's not 
trans hate. Why do you think the swimmers didn't want to reveal their identities? The swimmers did not want to or could not reveal their identities because they were threatened with getting kicked off the team and possibly getting kicked out of school. The controversy over Leah Thomas having ripple effects in the sporting world. I think the evidence based on her times alone and the fact that she's gone from being a medium ranked male swimmer to a top ranked female swimmer makes us uh, think that perhaps uh, she retains an advantage. And that brings the whole fairness question in into play. So give and whether a year is long enough or whether any duration of time is long enough. At the beginning of the season, the NCAA policy required a year of estrogen or testosterone suppression for transgender athletes to be eligible to compete. But last month, in the middle of the season, they changed course, allowing each sport to set its own rules. So USA Swimming did just that, this month announcing new guidelines for trans female athletes requiring a lower level of testosterone and adding an independent three-person medical panel to determine whether the athlete has an unfair competitive advantage. There's been a lot of controversy and opposition to that rule change. What do you think about that? My priority is always going to be inclusion in sport and what it comes down you know, for, for me is the trans athletes that I know are athletes, and at their core, a true athlete always wants to make sure that a competition is fair. There are also a lot of people who think it's Leah's success that's creating this push to change the rules. That does feel like a, a you know, very quick connection to make. She's being successful at our sport, and all of a sudden the rules are being changed. But these changes come after continued scientific study that questions whether someone who's gone through male puberty can fairly roll back enough of the physical advantages they may have gotten. And then I think you also have to ask yourself about the legacy effects of testosterone. So the fact that somebody's been exposed to high levels of testosterone for six, eight years, and what does that do even when the testosterone goes away as people transition? Is it fair to say you can't ever reverse the effects of legacy testosterone? Uh, it would be difficult in all of the facets. For example, lung volume is not going to get going to get smaller. Probably things related to bone structure and bone density aren't going to be different. Certainly people's hands and feet probably aren't going to get smaller. We talked to a number of people who were in the medical world and they were pointing to things like once you go through puberty as a man, you have bigger lung capacity, you have more muscle strength, that people are convinced no matter, almost no matter what you say that that would give a trans woman an advantage. I think one of the things that I always come back to is an athlete like Michael Phelps, who we can all point to and say, yeah, he has twice the lung capacity of, of any one of his competitors, but no one was upset or, you know, calling it unfair. If you're going to point to those things, then your conclusion has to be, well, yeah, they were built to do sport, you know, or they were built to swim. It, it's not about puberty because anyone can can go through any sort of hormonal change and still not be a great athlete because there is just so much more to great athletes than hormones. The NCAA announced last week that the new USA swimming guidelines would not be enforced this year, clearing the way for Leah to compete in her final year. Unfortunately, it has become about Leah Thomas and that is a tragedy because it never should have. We have so many sport leaders that are paid exceptionally well to be able to come up with sports policy, but they weren't gonna do that until we had somebody like Leah Thomas coming forward. Isaac says his transition has been liberating, allowing him to become a better version of himself. And what's it like when you catch a glimpse of yourself? What strikes you? I, uh, I joke about it with my friends a lot, but I've just become so much more self-centered. I check myself out in the mirror, you know, it's, it's... You're liking what you see. Exactly, you know, there's something really powerful about being able to, you know, look at yourself in the mirror in a reflection and say, yeah, that is me, and I love it. In some ways, you're swimming better than you ever have. You're breaking your own personal Best. I love the saying, you know, a happy swimmer is a fast swimmer. I think I am just at my core so much happier, so much lighter than I was before. 
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.